<laughs> Chris and William are getting ready for the day. Which of them doesn't live alone? William is brushing his teeth, but there is one more toothbrush in the bathroom. It's likely to belong to someone else, so I'd say William doesn't live alone. Now, take a look at these pictures of Philip and Kai. One of them lives with his girlfriend. Can you tell who it is? There's a pair of high heels and a dress in Philip's wardrobe. He probably has a girlfriend. Look at Luna and Evadine's rooms. One of the girls has a sister who she shares the room with. Can you tell who has a sister? There's a bunk bed in Luna's room. I bet she has a sibling. Okay, one of these guys has a cat. Can you tell who it is? It's the guy on the right. Look, the wallpaper at the bottom of the wall is scratched. Now, I'll be showing you some pictures one by one. Your task is to find what's wrong with them. Ready? Here's the first one. The sun is shining, but the camels don't cast shadows. Here's the next one. What's really off here? Look at the flag at the top of the building and at the tree nearby. It seems that the wind is blowing in different directions. This is impossible. This one is pretty simple. What will you say? The reflection in the mirror is wrong. Pay attention to the smallest details. What's wrong here? The school bus doesn't have a door. Something's off with this image. What is it? Look at the clock. In the winter, no sunset can happen at this hour. Esme was walking in the forest. She got lost but found the witch's house. She walked in to ask for her help. The witch and the cat had a guest. The witch's grandson came to visit. The grandson had heard of Esme and of her ability to solve riddles. So, he had a riddle for her too. He took a t-shirt and cut two holes in it. The question was, how many holes does the t-shirt have now? Eight. With two holes cut through, there are two on each side, four in total. Plus, there are two holes for the arms, one for the head, and one at the bottom. Every weekday, Kennedy eats an apple on her way to work. Once, she noticed a woman selling flowers. The woman gave a man a bouquet and said, tuna sandwich. The next day, it was yogurt, directed at another person. On the third day, it was eggs. Kennedy got curious and walked up to the woman to get some flowers. The woman said, apple. What was her weird ability? The woman always knew the last thing her client ate. Simon had a crush on a new girl in his class. Finally, he asked her out on a date. To impress her, he told the girl he had undergone a special secret training program. And then he visited the moon. He even had a picture. The girl took a look at it but didn't believe Simon. Why? In the picture, Simon is standing on the moon. Still, there's another moon in the background, which is impossible. He might have cool Photoshop skills, but he definitely hadn't thought it through. One rich and well-known elderly woman, Mrs. Stevenson, had been living alone for years. She had one interesting quirk. 
Every time someone rang the doorbell, she wouldn't open the door without putting on her coat and hat first. Can you guess why? She didn't know who the visitor was until she opened the door. If she liked that person, she'd tell them she'd just returned home and invite them to come in. If it was someone she didn't want to spend time with, she said she was leaving. Mrs. Jordan loved music, so she sent her daughter, Gianna, to music school. The woman made the girl play every day. Once, Mrs. Jordan had to go on a business trip for two weeks. She asked Gianna to practice every day, and the girl agreed. When Mrs. Jordan came back two weeks later, she realized Gianna hadn't been practicing. How did she understand it? The piano is dusty, which means it's been a while since Gianna last opened it. A group of aliens from another galaxy discovered planet Earth and decided to study people. Four of them turned into humans and went to our planet to explore. But the aliens didn't really succeed in pretending to be humans. Take a look at these photos and try to find an alien. Here's the first image. Can you spot anything strange? This guy's skin is blue. He must be the alien. This one's harder. Do you see a fake human here? It's winter and it's cold, but this guy is only wearing shorts. That's some non-human ability to tolerate cold temperatures. What about this one? Take a closer look at what this guy is eating. It doesn't look like human food at all. Okay, what do you say here? Did you notice this one has six fingers? I bet it's him. Mrs. Lawrence has three daughters who she doesn't allow to go outside after 8 p.m. The woman was at work when a neighbor called her and said she'd seen one of her daughters in the mall. Mrs. Lawrence immediately called each of her girls. Mia said she'd been playing badminton outside. Nicole said she had an online study session with her friends. Quinn said she'd been playing computer games. Who lied? Mia. She couldn't play badminton alone, and since her sisters were all busy, they couldn't play with her. I have a friend, Anna. Her mom is the most unusual person I know. She has green hair, wears skirts with trousers, and has a pet raccoon. She also has three daughters. Her oldest daughter's name is Wednesday. Her middle daughter's name is Thursday. Can you guess what her youngest daughter's name is? Well, it's Anna's mom, so her third daughter's name is Anna. On the first day of college, Ruby went missing. A detective had three suspects, Mrs. Collins, the director, Mr. Wright, the cleaning man, and Cassidy, Ruby's best friend. Mrs. Collins said that she had to do her midterm report and hadn't left her office. Mr. Wright said he hadn't even seen the girl. Cassidy said they'd spent the whole day together at college. But then Ruby went home. Who is lying? It must be the director, Mrs. Collins. It was the first day of college. There couldn't possibly be any midterm reports yet. Della and Aurora always tell the truth, but on their birthdays, they always lie. Today is September 3rd, and their friend Mark asks them when their birthdays are. Della says it was yesterday. Aurora says it's tomorrow. The next day, the guy asks the same question, but their answers don't change. When are the girls' birthdays? Each of them lied on one of the days, so these two days must be their birthdays. Della said it was yesterday both times so her birthday must be on September 3rd. 
Then, the next day, she told the truth. September 4th is Aurora's birthday. She told the truth on the first day and then lied on her birthday. Hazley and Skylar are jaywalking. Hazley is listening to music and Skylar is texting. Who is in danger? It's Skylar. She's jaywalking right where the road takes a turn. There's a car approaching her, and the driver might not have enough time to react. Serafina and Flora wanted to go to a party, but their parents had grounded them. Serafina decided to leave through the back door, and Flora wanted to sneak out through her bedroom window. Who will not make it to the party? Probably Flora. Her father is sitting next to her window, reading a book. He'll probably see her leaving. Brooke and Sydney were going to learn how to swim. Brooke went to the lake near her house, and Sydney went to the ocean with her friends. Who is in greater danger? Brooke, she went alone. There was no one around to save her in case something goes wrong. Brielle got a new bike as a present for her birthday. It was a surprise, so she locked it in the room and left for work. When she returned, the bike wasn't there. She realized someone in her family must have pulled a prank. Her brother said he hadn't seen anything. Her dad said he'd noticed a bike while walking past her room, but she was in a hurry to get to work. Her mom said she'd spent the day downstairs making a cake. Who pulled the prank? It must be Brielle's dad. She locked the room so he couldn't see the bike unless he walked in. In a magical world, there are two cities connected by a bridge. The city on the left bank of the river is guarded. No one can enter or leave it without written permission. Ellie was held captive in this city. She managed to escape and needed to get to the other side. It took 10 minutes to cross the bridge, but the guard came out of his house every five minutes. How can Ellie cross the bridge? Ellie should leave the city when the guard goes back to his house. Five minutes later, she should turn around and walk back towards the guard. When she approaches the man, he'll think she's trying to come in. But since Ellie won't have any permission, he'll send her back to the city on the right bank of the river. Jenny and Ben were about to get married. They wanted to book a hotel for their wedding ceremony in the party. So they went to a wedding planner to look at some options. She told them only three hotels were available for the day they wanted and showed them the pictures. Which one should they choose? Take a closer look at the third floor windows of the first hotel. In the last window on the right, there's a creepy shadow of a monster that appears and disappears. Five stars or not, no one would like to get married in a haunted place unless they're an Adams family member. In the third hotel, only has two stars. It probably doesn't have the facilities to host a wedding, so the best choice is the second hotel. Great choice, the wedding planner said, and you're in luck because they actually have a great discount offer. If you can answer this riddle correctly, you won't have to pay for the ballroom rental. Here it is. Those who have it, do not say it. Those who take it, do not know it. Those who know it, do not want it. What is it? Do you know the answer? It's fake money. The next day, Ben and Jenny went to the hotel to pick the best ballroom for their party. The hotel manager took them to three different rooms where they could host everything from the ceremony itself to the dinner and after party. Which one should they pick? Do you see a little mouse hole in the corner of the first ballroom? The couple wouldn't want such uninvited guests at their party. As for the second ballroom, the chandelier looks like it might fall down any minute. Not the safest option so they should pick the third ballroom. 
It was time for Ben and Jenny to pick the wedding menu. Since they were not paying for the venue, they wanted to spare no expense in serving food that the guests would never forget. That's why they called three different Michelin star chefs. Each of them prepared a different dish and presented them for a tasting. Which chef, and therefore, which dish should they go for? Even though the dish the second chef made looks perfectly fine, do you see a rat's tail hanging from his chef's hat? There must be some ratatouille situation going on there. So that's a pass. The third dish looks like spaghetti, right? Well, look again. Those are actually very thin snakes. Exotic flavors might not be the best option, so they better go with the classical burger that the first chef made. Before they made their wedding vows, Jenny had to say yes to a dress. So, she went to a couture store to check their wedding gown collection. She explained to the designer the style of the dress she wanted for her ceremony. The designer said he had just the perfect gown for her and would bring it to her if she answered his riddle correctly. He asked, if a gown takes an hour to dry, how many hours will it take six dresses to dry? It'll still take one hour because they'll all dry at the same time. Ben had one last item to buy on his wedding shopping list, and it was what fastens two people yet touches only one. Can you figure out what it is? It's a wedding ring, of course. Ben headed to a jewelry store to get something blue for his bride. The store owner showed him three different wedding rings with blue gemstones. Which one should he buy? The second ring has an engraving inside, so it must have belonged to someone else before. The gemstone on the third ring has a tiny crack in it. That can only mean it's made of glass or even plastic, so Ben should buy the first ring with a sapphire. Next, Ben and Jenny were going to send out invitations. One print shop offered them three different versions of invitations. Which one should they choose? Do you remember the name of the hotel they booked? It was Sunrise Lodge, but the first invitation says Sunset Lodge, so this one won't do. And on the third invitation, their names are printed as Benny and Jen. That's not our couple, so they should choose the second invitation. Before the wedding, three of their friends paid them a visit. One of them brought a painting as a wedding gift, but all three claimed that they were the artist who had created it. Two of them must be lying. Can you figure out who the actual artist is? Take a look at the signature on the painting. It says, Denise. Now look at the third friend's necklace. It has the letter D. So she must be Denise, the artist who painted the painting. It was finally the day of the wedding, and Ben and Jenny's guests started to arrive. However, the hotel security spotted three suspicious-looking people who could be uninvited. Take a look at these three guys. Can you tell which one is not supposed to be at the wedding? Do you see the hotel wristbands that say Ben and Jenny that the second and the third guys are wearing? That can only mean they are actually invited. So it's the first guy who's crushing the wedding. Sorry, dude, no free drinks for you. After the vows were exchanged, it was time to party. As Ben and Jenny were dancing, someone spilled their drink on Jenny's dress, but no one saw who it was. Jenny spotted three people who could have done it. Take a look at them. Can you tell who ruined her dress? The first guy has spots on his shirt that resemble stains from the spilled drink. 
but they are actually part of the pattern, so it can't be him. The third lady looks clean, but the hem of the second lady's skirt looks dirty, so it must be her who did it. After the ceremony ended, Ben and Jenny wanted to take a photo to capture the moment forever. But take a look at it, there's something strange about it. Can you spot what it is? Can you see a woman hiding behind the trees watching them? She is wearing a witch hat, but it's a wedding ceremony and not a costume party. Creepy. Right before leaving, Jenny suddenly vanished. Then the witch suddenly appeared in front of Ben and said, You may only kiss the bride if you figure out with whom you really tied the knot. Ha <laughs> ha! Then two Jennies appeared in front of Ben. Can you tell which one is his real wife? Remember the wedding photo? The Jenny on the left is the real one because her tattoo is on the same side as in the photo. Now that Ben and Jenny's wedding was over, phew, it was time for them to pick a honeymoon destination. They went to a travel agency to book a tour. The travel agent offered them three different holiday destinations, Ibiza, Cannes, and the Caribbeans. Which one should they go to? Have you noticed the weather forecast on TV in the office? It states that the weather in Ibiza is going to be windy in the upcoming days, and in Cannes, it's going to be rainy, so they should pick the Caribbeans and enjoy the sun. The travel agent said she could upgrade their plane tickets to business class for free. It would be her wedding gift to them. But they had to crack this riddle. What can travel around the world while staying in a corner? It's a stamp. Mark was walking along the river when he heard someone screaming. It was a young woman who was drowning. The guy immediately left his jacket and backpack on the ground and jumped into the water. Luckily, he was on time. When Mark pulled the woman out of the river, he saw a passerby standing next to his stuff. Unfortunately, I can't swim, but I looked after your things, the man said. Then why did you rummage in my backpack? Mark asked. How did he understand someone had opened his backpack? When he dropped the bag on the ground, the zipper was on the left side, but now it's on the right side. It was a scorching hot day when Thomas made a bet with his friends. At that time, they were chilling in the garden, drinking water and lemonade. Thomas told his friends that water produced by different companies tasted different too. You can blindfold me. I'll take a sip from two bottles of water, the one we have on the table and the one from a different producer. I saw it in the kitchen. I bet I'll be able to tell the difference. Then he did exactly that. His friends were ready to give Thomas the money he had won, but one of them cut in. You were cheating, he said. Why did he think so? It was an extremely hot day. No wonder the water had been outside for several hours, which was much warmer than the water brought from the kitchen. Someone robbed a bank in a large city. A police detective went to visit the main suspect, who had been detained several times before. I've been feeling unwell this week, and I haven't left my apartment for three days. Luckily, I didn't need food. My fridge is full. You can make sure of it yourself. The man said and opened his fridge, but the detective realized the man was lying and arrested him. How did he figure it out? First of all, that loaf of bread on the table looks fresh. Plus, if the man had been staying inside for three days already, his fridge wouldn't be so full. Mr. Black sold beautiful, rare vases. There were dozens of them on the shelves of his store. 
One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, the owner had his head bandaged and his store was a mess. Some guys in masks ran into my store and grabbed the money and the most expensive vases. Then they hit me on the head and I blacked out. Police officers immediately understood that Mr. Black was lying to get the insurance money. How did they figure it out? Even though most of the vases are on the floor, they aren't even cracked. But if the vases had fallen down from the shelves during the robbery, they would have been shattered. Look at these two bloggers. As you see, they both seem to be very popular. They also have the same amount of likes, but there's something wrong with one of them. She must be hiding something. What is it? The girl on the right has a fake bag. The logo on it looks like that of Chanel, but it's written Gucci underneath. Marcel was driving along a dangerous mountain road. Suddenly, he saw a man sitting on the side of the road and stopped. It turned out the man hadn't managed to control his car. It fell off the road and the man got thrown out of the window. And now, his very expensive car was beyond repair. Could you be my witness when I prepare the documents for my insurance company? The man asked Marcel. The guy agreed, but asked the man to show him what was inside the car. The man took the key out of his pocket and unlocked the damaged vehicle. I won't take part in this fraud, Marcel said. Why did he think the man was lying? If the man had been thrown out of the car, the key would still be in the ignition. Dylan and Susan had been happily married for 10 years. One day, Dylan went on a business trip. When he returned, Susan immediately understood that the man uh -oh. wasn't her husband. How did she figure it out? Dylan always wore his wedding ring. If you were attentive, you must have noticed it on his finger. But the man who returned to Susan didn't have the wedding ring. The police found out that a smuggler was going to leave the country through the largest airport in the city. A detective arrived there and detained three people who looked suspicious. Look at them and try to figure out who the smuggler is. It's the third passenger. His suitcase is full of totally random stuff. Women's shoes, some random socks, a pair of old dirty jeans, and even a wig. Plus, when closed, the suitcase looks much larger than when it's open. Sarah's husband, Michel, was a professional cyclist. He was about to have a challenging cycling tournament. I promise I'll bring you the bouquet they give to the winner, Michel told Sarah. Four hours later, he came back with beautiful flowers. But Sarah realized right away that Michelle hadn't won the tournament. How did she figure it out? Those flowers are actually from Sarah's garden. The same flowers are growing next to their house. Look at these people. The man is in the hospital. He's lost his memory. And these two women both claim to be his partner. One of them is obviously lying. But which one? The woman on the left is lying. If they were married, they would have wedding rings on their fingers. Now, there are these three people. One of them is lying. Who is it? Look at this woman claiming that she's pregnant. See that Adam's apple? It's a man. He can't be pregnant. Look at these people. 
can you figure out who's a vampire? It's this man. See those fangs? Creepy. Which of these girls is the man's wife? It's the girl on the right. She's wearing a necklace saying Kate, and the man has a tattoo with the same name on his arm. A store security guard stopped a man who was leaving a clothing store. The sales assistant claims you've stolen a pair of expensive gloves. These are my gloves. I've had them for ages. But the security guard immediately understood the man was lying. How? The man wouldn't be able to use these gloves. They're both for the same hand. Rachel reached the final of a game show. In the last round, she could win a gold bar, but only if she managed to get it. One of the bars was in a container with boiling hot water. The jar containing the second bar was filled with strong acid. And in the third jar, there were venomous scorpions. Uh -oh. Which container should Rachel choose? The woman just needs to wait until the water in the first jar cools down and take the gold bar. Detective Adams came to a park to have lunch in the sun, but his attention was drawn by three men running around a fountain. Each of them was shouting, Thief! Catch the thief! The detective was confused. Who was the real thief? That's why he just kept watching. After some time, the distance between the men shortened. Detective Adams immediately realized who the real thief was. Can you figure it out too? If the third man was the thief, the second one would only have to turn around to catch him. The same goes for the second man, which means the man running the first is the criminal. If it rains at midnight, can you expect that in 72 hours it will be sunny? No way! In 72 hours, it's gonna be night again! Can you crack this Rebus puzzle? That's right, it means accelerate! Now Mary and John are an ordinary young couple. One day, they decided to go out of town and spend some time in nature, so they jumped in the car. While they were driving, they suddenly saw four hitchhiking people at a gas station. But most of them looked pretty suspicious. There was a man in tattered clothes, a woman wearing a cape, a man with a sullen face, and a teenage girl. Who should they give the ride to? Look, the woman in a cape doesn't cast a shadow. She must be a vampire. The man with the sullen face has a vampire bite on his neck, so he's now a vampire too. The teenage girl has suspicious claws, so she must be a werewolf. Thus, the man in tattered clothes is the only one who doesn't seem to be dangerous. There's a huge crime spree happening in town. The police are swarmed, and they don't have enough officers to help everyone. The citizens need you. Buckle up and think fast. You have to catch all the criminals right away. Look at the screen and find all the suspicious people in town. There are only two of them, actually. First off, oh, look no. at this lady. Why would she wear three wristwatches at the same time? Ah, these must be stolen. And since she has no bag or pockets, she had to put them all on her wrist. Next, there's this bearded man. Seems like he's got a lot of jewelry hidden in his beard. Ooh, that's a weird construction. 
Paula and Jeremy have been married for five years already. They had a perfect relationship and everything was great. One day, Jeremy had to leave for a business trip for a week. However, he came back home unexpectedly two days later. Paula instantly realized that it wasn't Jeremy and called the police. Remember the real Jeremy who took off the wedding ring before he left for a business trip? The man who showed up two days later was wearing one. This is what made Paula suspicious. During an Arctic expedition, an explorer found an ice cave. He went in. Suddenly, the entrance got blocked by a small avalanche. Luckily, there were three other passages in the cave. But here's the catch. Each passage has a warning sign for the explorers. It says that the first passage leads to a group of yeti, the second one leads to a huge group of mammoths, and the third one leads to hungry bears. Which passage should our explorer choose? Ah, those warning signs must be a bit outdated. Mammoths went extinct long ago, so passage 2 must be the safest option. A young man woke up in a hospital without remembering anything, including his own name. Beside his bed, there were three men, each of them claiming to be this young man's brother. Suddenly, the young man had a couple of flashbacks from his childhood, and he clearly remembered that he only had one brother. Who is his real brother? The man on the right seems to be his brother. He's the only one who looks like the guy in the bed, plus they have matching tattoos on their arms. Martin's an undercover detective. He's on a mission right now, and he's pretending to be one of the staff members at a luxurious resort. His mission is to follow a dangerous criminal who's planning to steal a rare piece of art from a wealthy businessman. Martin has to report the situation to his partner Steve every day. They can't use phones to communicate, so they make codes using deck chairs and umbrellas. If the robbery isn't planned for today, there should be more deck chairs than umbrellas by the pool. If the robbery is planned for today, there should be more umbrellas. Today, Steve's flying in a helicopter over the pool to check the situation. Now, look at what you see and decide whether the robbery is planned for today or not. Yes, the robbery is planned for today. There are five umbrellas and only four deck chairs. Jessica has a twin sister, Allison. Their relationship is far from perfect, and Allison always plays mean tricks on Jessica. Today is the prom, and Jessica has three nice dresses to choose from. A green one, a blue one, and a pink one. But when she opened her wardrobe, she saw it was a terrible mess. That must have been another nasty prank from Allison. So, what dress should Jessica wear? She should wear the pink dress. A button on the blue dress is about to come off. Oops. And the green one was spoiled with paint by Allison. Alright, a couple of short riddles to give you a break. Ready? There's something all the people in this world do simultaneously. Disclaimer, it's not about breathing. So what is it? All the people are getting older simultaneously. Are they getting any wiser? Eh, Don't know about that. There's one thing that can fly with no wings and cry even without eyes. What is it? It's a cloud. What can you see with your eyes closed? It's a dream. 
Okay, enough with the easy short riddles. Let's go back to hardcore mode. Emily and Mary are putting on their makeup, getting ready to go out and have fun. They use pretty much the same things. Phones look similar. The same with lipsticks, clothes, and everything else. So, who's poor? Take a closer look at Emily. Her dress kind of gives her away, since it's an obvious knockoff. A green apple costs $1, a red one costs $2, and a blue one costs $3. What apples and how many of them did Frank buy, if we know he spent $3 and two bills only? Frank bought a green one and a red one. He gave a $1 bill for the green one and a $2 bill for the red one. Yeah, he could have grabbed the blue one and given the same two bills, but blue apples just don't exist. Three Finn, also pronounced Three Friends, fell asleep under a tree in the countryside. While they were resting, a guy passing by painted mustaches on their faces. Once the men woke up, they started to laugh. But then, all of a sudden, they stopped. Why? Well, at first, they saw the mustaches on their friends' faces and found it funny. But then, they realized their friends were laughing too. It meant that they had mustaches on their faces as well. Aunt Jean is a huge fan of cats. She lives in a one-story house. She has cat garden statues, a cat rug, cat wallpapers, cat cushions, and even on the fridge, there are cat photos. Not to mention all 30 cats that live in her house. What painting is there upstairs? She lives in a one-story house, so there are no cat paintings upstairs. It's right next to the fridge. Anthony, the financial director of a big company, finally persuaded new partners to sign a super important agreement. He then put this document into a folder and left it on the table in his office. When he arrived at work the next morning, the folder was gone. John gathered all the employees who were in the office at that time and asked them if they had noticed anything weird. The cleaning lady said that she had been busy washing the floor and hadn't paid attention to anything around. The designer explained that he hadn't left his working place even once. What's more, being an artist, he didn't have any interest in agreement documents. The accountant admitted that he had entered John's office to have some documents signed. But once he noticed there was no one inside, he immediately left. So, who took the folder with the agreement? It was the designer. John never mentioned that the folder was gone. He just asked if they had noticed anything weird. How would he know that the missing folder had an agreement inside? Hmm, grounds for dismissal, I'd say. You're at Aaron and Cleo's wedding. Here's Aaron, standing alone. Which of these ladies is his wife-to-be? It's this one. Look, there's her name, Cleo, on her bracelet. Three girls are fighting over a doll. It belongs to one of them, but each of the three says it's hers. Who do you think the real owner of the doll is? It must be this girl. Look, she and the doll have matching outfits. It's Halloween, and some people got dressed as ghosts, but there's one real ghost among them. Who do you think it is? Look, this person doesn't cast a shadow. Three friends went camping. 
two of them are real people and one is a robot. Take a closer look at the photo of them and tell me who you think the robot is. It must be this guy. Take a look at the footprints each of them left. This guy's footprints are actually wheel prints, which is not very common for a real human. Amanda and her mom are participating in a game show. It's the final round, and Amanda's task is to figure out which of these two women is her mom. Both women are wearing masks, so Amanda cannot see their faces. Can you help her? Pay attention to the woman's hair color. Amanda is redheaded. This woman has red hair too, so I'd bet it's her mom. In any case, Amanda must know what color her mom's hair is, so she's safe here. Local police got information that their little town had been invaded. Officers started walking around asking for people's ID cards. I'll show them to you one by one, and you must decide who looks suspicious. For example, this one. What's your verdict? Look at this guy's birth year. No, it's definitely not a real ID. Here's another one. What can you say about this lady? Look at her place of residence. It's just the name of some place. There's no mention of a state or country. Nope, this person is suspicious too. The next person is this young lady, and here's her ID card. Do you see anything suspicious? She seems fine to me. I'd let her go. Another one. What about this person? This time, pay attention to this photo. All document photos should have a white background. This one isn't an officially issued ID card, so I'd say he's suspicious. I have the last suspect for you. What do you say? Is there anything we should be concerned about? No, he's okay. Let him go. A rich lady, Mrs. Reed, was looking for a person to clean her house every week. She invited three candidates and asked them why they wanted the job. Amelia said she wanted to earn some money during the summer to travel to another state with her friends. Colton said his mother forced him to do something in the summer so that he didn't play video games all day long. Danica said she was totally broke and needed money to survive. When they left, Mrs. Reed saw that her diamond necklace was missing. She guessed that one of the candidates had stolen it, so she invited them again. Take a look at them and figure out who the thief is. It's Danica. She said she was broke. The last time she was there, she was wearing old clothes. But look at her now. She has new clothes, gold earrings, and an iPhone. She must have stolen the necklace and sold it. On a snowy winter day, police got a call that one of the houses in the neighborhood had been robbed. A detective visited people living there, but everyone said that they'd been staying at home because of the weather. Still, the detective understood who was lying. This person became the main suspect. Who is it? It must be the person living in this house. He said he'd been staying at home, but he obviously parked his car after the snow had already built up on the driveway. So, the car was away for a while. Why would he lie? Another day, another crime. Mr. Spencer, a businessman, was robbed. He said he'd had a heavy safe full of cash in his bedroom. Now it was gone, and he was worried that he didn't have any proof that he'd ever possessed it. Still, a detective said that he believed the man and asked for details. How did the detective know the businessman wasn't a liar? (music) 
Look, there's dance on the floor. Something really heavy was indeed standing there for a long time. There was another robbery in a small town. And the main suspect was Damon, the victim's old friend turned enemy and ex-business partner. The next day, on August 7th, the police paid Damon a visit. He wasn't at home. When they reached him by phone, Damon said he was on vacation in Greece and that he left a week before. The police examined his apartment. When the detective looked around, he realized Damon had left recently. How did he understand it? Look at the calendar on the wall. It says August 6th, which is the day of the crime. If Damon had really left the week before, his calendar would date back to the day when he departed instead of yesterday. In a small town, someone had stolen all the chicken nuggets from a local store. The store owner called the police and they started the investigation. There were three suspects. Mr. Jones said that he'd already been at work at that time. Mr. Collins said that his family was vegan, so he wouldn't be interested in chicken nuggets. Mr. Martin said the police had just woken him up. Who's a liar? The thief is Mr. Collins. He said his family was vegan, but look, they keep chickens. That's suspicious. Someone stole a bike in a small town, and the police were working hard to find it. There were three main suspects, all of them teenagers. Ava said that she'd been out with her friends and had just returned home. Brian said that his mom had made him paint a fence, and that's what he'd been doing. Caleb said he'd been playing with his brother in the garden. Who lied? Brian, look, the fence is red, but the grass next to it doesn't have any stains, so the fence isn't likely to be freshly painted. Aiko and Della were sisters. Aiko was broke. She asked Della to lend her some money, but Della refused. Several minutes later, Della went downstairs, and Aiko noticed there was a $20 bill on Della's desk, so she took it, with an intention to return it one week later. When Della came back and asked where the bill was, Aiko said that a gust of wind had suddenly blown inside and the bill had flown out the window. Della didn't believe her and asked her to give the money back. How did Della realize it was a lie? If a gust of wind had blown into the room, nothing would have flown out of the window. It would have been swept from the table to the floor, but not the other way around. Mr. Wilson's company was having lots of financial problems. One day, the man called the police. He said someone had broken into his office. They stole my safe with all the money I had. The police officers who came to investigate asked the man why he was sure it was they. Well, my safe was too heavy for one person to carry it. The police instantly realized Mr. Wilson was lying. How? If the safe had been indeed so heavy, it would have left dents in the carpet. After the bank had been robbed, the police found the bag with the money in the park. It was lying among cacti. The police officers arrested three suspects. It didn't take long to figure out who the bank robber was. Do you know who it is? It's the man on the left. He's the only one with some scratches. They were left by the cacti. The police suspected that Deborah took part in smuggling diamonds out and into the country. But they didn't have any proof. That's why Detective Taylor was following the woman, trying to find some evidence. One day, he noticed that Deborah entered a house. But when she left it, Taylor realized she didn't have any diamonds on her. She must have left them in the house. How did he understand? Deborah was wearing boots with removable heels. The diamonds were hidden there. Look at this picture carefully and try to figure out who the guy's mom is.
The woman on the right is definitely human. She can't breathe underwater. But the guy doesn't have any problems with that. He's smiling and looks relaxed. Plus, he has gills. That means the mermaid is his mother. Detective Martin was choosing a diamond ring for his fiance when a man in a black mask ran into the jewelry store. He made all the visitors lie on the floor and took the most expensive jewelry and money. After that, Detective Martin saw the man get on a red motorbike and speed away. The police officer jumped into his car and set off on a chase. At one point, he came to a crossroads. Where should he go now? Suddenly, Martin saw a car coming from the opposite direction. He asked the driver if he had seen the red bike. No, I've only seen a silver convertible and nothing else. Then the detective saw a gray car appear from the left. The woman inside said she hadn't seen the red bike, but she'd seen a yellow bike and a group of cyclists. And the man who appeared from the right told Detective Martin he'd only noticed a large blue truck. Where is the robber? The motorbike can only be inside the blue truck. A unique diamond was exhibited in a famous museum. It was guarded at all times, and only small groups of 10 people were allowed to enter the room. After one of such groups had left, an alarm went off. The guards ran into the room and found there a young man. They searched him. There were just several bills, a lighter, a bottle with soda, a camera, and a cell phone in his bag. The guards had to let the man go. But the next morning, it was announced that the diamond had been stolen. How did it happen? The man replaced the real diamond with a fake one and hid the real treasure in his bottle with soda. Mr. Raymond Lopez, a rich businessman, urgently needed his assistant. But the guy was on vacation in the countryside. It was Wednesday when Mr. Lopez sent him a letter asking the man to come to the city as soon as he could. Now it's already Sunday and no assistant in sight. Raymond decided to go and check on the guy. When he arrived, he found out that his assistant was okay and packing his stuff. Oh, Mr. Lopez, I received your letter just yesterday. I was going to leave in a half an hour, he exclaimed. You're fired. I don't need people I can't trust. You just wanted to have a longer vacation, that's all. Why did Mr. Lopez think so? The calendar on the assistant's table shows that it's Monday, November 4th. But there's no mail delivery on Sundays. The guy is lying. Someone robbed a bank in a large city. A police detective went to visit the main suspect. I've been feeling unwell all this week, and I haven't left my apartment for three days. I didn't even need food. My fridge is full. You can make sure yourself," the suspect said, and indeed opened his fridge. But the detective realized the man was lying and arrested him. How did he figure it out? First of all, the bread on the table looks fresh. Plus, if the man had been staying inside for three days already, his fridge wouldn't be that full. An art expert paid big money at an auction for a painting that didn't cost anything. He knew about this fact. He was also an honest man and didn't have any criminal intentions. Why did he buy this picture? Although the painting cost nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. After several crimes had been committed in the city, the police decided to visit the main suspect. He lived in the countryside. When the officers entered the house, they found no one inside. They searched the entire place, including the attic, which was in a mess. Then they decided to wait for the house owner to come home. One of the police officers went to buy some water. When he came back, he told the rest of his colleagues there was no need to wait anymore. Why? The attic window was closed when the police first arrived, but now it's open. The criminal was hiding in the attic and escaped through the window. Two people are standing near the river. Both of them want to get to the opposite side, but the boat can only hold one of them. 
And still, they manage to get across the river. How? They were on the opposite banks. Detective Adams came to the park to have lunch outside in the sun. But his attention was drawn by three men running around a fountain. Each of them was shouting, Thief! Catch the thief! The detective was confused. Who was the real thief? That's why he just kept watching. After some time, the distance between the men shortened. Detective Adams immediately realized who the real thief was. Can you figure it out too? If the third man was the thief, the second one would only have to turn around to catch him. The same goes for the second man, which means the man running the first is the criminal. How can you put a whole apple into a glass bottle without cutting the fruit or breaking the glass? Put the bottle over an apple tree branch in the spring, then wait until an apple grows inside. Scott, an infamous burglar, came home one evening. Just a day before, he had stolen some very expensive paintings from Mr. Smith's house. He was in the living room when he noticed several police officers approaching his home. Scott gave instructions to his wife and slipped out through the back door. When the officer knocked on the door, Scott's wife told him, My husband has been away for a week already. He's actually supposed to come home today. At this moment, Scott entered the house. He hugged his wife as if they hadn't seen each other for ages. But the police officers didn't believe them. Why? Look at the dog. If its owner had been away for a week, the pooch would be jumping around, happy and excited. But the animal saw Scott just a couple of minutes ago and isn't showing too much enthusiasm. If it's raining at midnight, can you expect that in 72 hours it'll be sunny? No way! In 72 hours, it's going to be night again. Detective Lee was called to a small family cafe. The owner told him her story. I went away to the kitchen for a couple of minutes, but when I came back, I saw that all the money from the cash desk had been stolen. At that time, there were only three visitors in the cafe. All of them were women. When the detective asked them who had taken the money, each of them exclaimed, It was her! The first woman added, The owner is my friend! How could I do this to her? The second woman said, I was looking out of the window, drinking my coffee. I didn't see anything. And the third woman claimed she would never steal anything. Who took the money? Detective Lee quickly figured out that the thief was the second woman. First of all, the two others pointed at her. Secondly, she claimed that the first woman had stolen the money. But if she really was looking out of the window, how could she know this? During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police that he wanted to save a bag of money, but he had to crouch to lace up his boot just in front of the emergency exit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came to his senses, the money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? All emergency doors open outwards. A young lady has the same number of brothers and sisters, but each of her brothers has two times fewer brothers than sisters. How many sisters and brothers are there in the family? There are four girls and three guys in the family. 